Good morning, Sunday School, New Heart Christian Center, and our community, our family. God bless you once again. We're glad to be before you uh, this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. The scripture says, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Um, our Sunday School this morning will be coming from John chapter 11, verses 1 through 16. Very familiar text. John chapter 11, verses 1 through 16. Our title is Jesus' Response to a Dire Need. Jesus' Response to a Dire Need. Our golden text, John 11, 11. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Amen. I'm going to ask um, the elder Horace Solomon if he would... Open us up in prayer this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning, Lord, thanking you for your many blessings. Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to be able to assemble in your house once again. And Lord, as we get ready to discuss your word, Lord, give us the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to rightly divide your word. Lord, open the hearts and the minds of your people so that they may hear your word and make the changes that need to be made. Lord, continue to keep us in the hollow of your hand and allow us to be able to enjoy the good things of life yes, in the land of the living. Continue to keep us and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, Jesus' response to a dire need. Again, John 11, 1 through 16. Our facts today is to observe Jesus' compassion and ready willingness to serve others. He has compassion. And he has a ready willingness to serve others. The Son of Man did not come to uh, be served, but he came to serve. Amen. The scripture had declared when he was here. Amen. Principle, to understand Jesus' response to the dire need of his friends. Our application to emulate Jesus' deeds of love and compassion for the glory of God. Now, as we open up this lesson, we do realize is that the longer we live this life, mm -hmm. uh, life will bring about twists and turns and ups and downs. And uh, one would ask um, this morning is how could a loving God mm -hmm. uh, allow such grief and allow such tragedy in people that love him lives and people that follow him how can a loving God allow these things so we hope this morning to answer that question um, there was one person at one time um, that he wrote a book I forgot his name but the name of that book was when bad things happen That's right. to good people right. now uh, that book and the things that he said kind of strayed away from what we believe in the word but there's something to think about why or when bad things happen to good people, people that love God, people that follow him, why does he allow such tragedy, such grief? Amen. And we're going to learn that this morning. Mm -hmm. And so as we open up, um, we look at the very first verse, 11 and 1, and it says, now a certain man was sick. Amen. Whenever the Bible is getting ready to, to present a story, it always talks about a certain man. Um, but you better believe that whenever the scripture says certain, that this thing is very important. Amen. This thing is uh, worthy of acceptation and for your learning. So there was a certain man that was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and his sister Martha. So um, John makes it clear that this is not Minister Ramos and Elder Solomon. Mm -hmm. This is not the Lazarus that was in the book of Luke. You, may, uh, you remember the rich man uh, that had died and the poor man, and uh, the poor man was begging and um, the rich man wouldn't give him anything. So right. this is not the same Lazarus. This right. is another Lazarus, and this Lazarus, um, as we will see, was friends with Jesus and his disciples. So um, I'm looking at this as well, and I'm looking at the place. Now a certain man was sick. We know that he's sick now. Um, I want you to put a circle around the word sick. 
Um, at this time, he's sick. Later on, you will see a word that says sleepeth, Come on. Uh, meaning that he had died. But right now, uh, he's sick. His name is Lazarus. Uh, you want to put a circle around that name as well. Um, that name means God helpeth him. Amen. Amen. So we have to be careful sometimes of what we name our children um, because names mean something. Amen. And then he's uh, from Bethany. Amen. I believe this is the same place that Jesus came riding in um, on a donkey. Amen. Amen. Into town. And so all of these places have significance. And Mary and Martha in John chapter 12 uh, uh, that uh, washed Jesus' feet and they kneeled down, they served him. So all of these things is significant. And why is it significant? Because these are people that are close, close to Jesus. To Jesus. Amen. Amen. So um, I also want to look at Minister Ramos. Mm -hmm. If you can recall, if you can just back the Sunday school back up over the last few weeks, just very quickly, mm -hmm. about some of the miracles um, that Jesus had done before we get ready to get up to this point. And I'll kind of help you. You remember in John chapter 2, uh, if you can back them up, um, about the water, turning the water into wine, mm -hmm. um, things of that nature. He said um, he was the also the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing Jesus always shows us that the miracles that he performed can not only be performed while he's present, right. but also while he's not there. Right. Um, as we go over the lesson, I also was thinking about the satirian who had such great faith, as Jesus yes. put it, yes. that all he needed was Jesus to say, thy servant is healed, and his servant would be healed, even though That's Jesus right. was not in the midst of the servant, even though Jesus did not touch him, he said, by your words, your, your faith... That's right. In this lesson, we're going to see a little bit different because the glory of God will be revealed. See, if yeah. Lazarus would have been healed while Jesus was afar off, mm -hmm. they probably would have said that he just got better. That's right. And so I think that by the time Jesus got there and Lazarus was dead and he stinketh, that there was no doubting that this definitely was the glory of God That's being right. revealed in Hey, man, that, that's awesome. So did you hear that? That it was really a setup for the glory of God to be revealed because we have seen Jesus work miracles in all other areas. Amen. We've seen him turn water into wine. We've seen him say that uh, provide meals for people that were hungry, that didn't have a way made for them. Uh, we see him heal a man that was blind. Uh, he he uh, got a demon. Uh, cast a demon out of a boy that had a demon in him. So we see Jesus work miracles in all these areas. But there's one area that was yet left Come on. that Jesus Great would thing. show through many infallible proofs. Many infallible, what the Bible say. He showed, he appeared in, through many infallible Come on. truths huh? and proof. And he will demonstrate his authority even over our greatest enemy. Amen. What Amen. is that? Death. Death. This, what, this is what uh, this is about. He's getting ready to demonstrate his authority over death. Amen. That's why uh, we don't have to allow death to have dominion. Amen. And what I mean by that, I mean that we don't have to allow sin to have dominion over us because Jesus have already spoken to our greatest enemy. Amen. Thank and you, so verse two says, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment. So this, uh, this is not Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is Mary, the sister of Martha and also the sister of Lazarus. Amen. The man Amen. that is definitely sick right now. And so John makes a distinction and a difference between who these people are. Mary, which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Let's listen to that again. Her brother was sick. And because her brother was sick, they were very close to Jesus. Amen. And they knew that if nobody else could solve their problem, 
Jesus could do it. They knew that after all alternatives have failed to try Jesus, when you've tried everything else and everything else has failed, they knew, try Jesus. They said, they said, uh, my brother's sick. And not only did they say my brother, that, you know, and I'm, I'm listening to that, 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 that sound tragic right there. My brother, my blood, the one who I love, my brother's sick. And not only that, verse 3 says, therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Elder Solomon, I want you just to, um, to uh, just expound a little on this verse because they come to Jesus and they tell him, this is to bring Jesus into it, he who you love is sick. Amen. They sent word to Jesus, but uh, a lot of times we don't understand why Jesus was not already there. And, it's, and, and of course, he had left the area because of the unbelief and the hard time yeah. and the opposition yeah. that others had presented to him. And that was, uh, his example shows us that you can do good for people, you can mm -hmm. do good towards people, but in the end, if, if they're not set up to appreciate what My you God. do, they will turn, on, turn on you. you. Amen. And so, uh, Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus, Jesus, your friend, your homeboy, the, yes, the, the one that you like to hang out with, your faithful friend is sick. We need for you to come and see about your friend. And so they're letting Jesus know that, you know, the one you really care about is sick. And so that, that's their way, as Elder Duke said, to get Jesus' attention. Yeah to draw him to Bethany again. Come on. Yeah, they, 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 they get his attention and understand that Jesus, that Jesus loved Lazarus, that he was close to them. Jesus loved Mary and Martha. They were uh, very close to him. And so they knew, my brothers, now, come on, Lazarus, the one that you spent time with, the one that you came over to the house, he, yes, it's him. He's sick. But they knew something that we should all know ourselves. They knew that there was nothing too hard for God. That's right. That's they right. knew that what he's done for others, if they knew that he can turn the water in the wine, they uh, knew that he could uh, feed the 5,000 with the two little fish and five loaves of bread. They knew if he could cast the demon out, if he could heal a blind man, certainly he can raise my brother from being sick. Amen. Now Amen. at this time, the brother had not even died yet, right. but they had enough faith to believe that if Jesus could just get there, their brother would be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. They believed that he would be healed. So the next verse says, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness, catch this, guys, this sickness is not unto death. We, we, we hear the, the pastor say sometimes, um, not all sicknesses are unto death. Not all sicknesses are unto death. So Jesus told them, this sickness is not unto death. Um, this next statement is going to be very important for the rest of this Sunday school. But for the glory of God. What do it say? But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. This You can put a tag on this. This is for the rest of this lesson. Um this morning. This sickness is not unto death. I begin to think about, and this is something we can talk about in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Jesus said the sickness, sickness was not unto death, but Lazarus ended up dying. Lazarus ended up dying. He said it was not unto death, but he ended up dying. And I just begin to think about sometimes he does not act when we want him to act. Mm -hmm. He does not come when we want him. Um, I'm also say he does not always come when we think he should have come. He allowed such 
tragedy to happen. Mm -hmm. He even allowed someone that he loved to go from being sick to dying. And was one would ask a question, Jesus, why would you allow such things to happen? But we've got to back it up. Verse 4 says, this lets us know, Minister Ramos, this is not all about us. This is not all about us. <laughs> this is not. Verse 4 says, this sickness is not unto death. Even though he died, but I'm, I'm going to correct this in a minute. But for the glory of God. How, how can the Son of God be glorified? Okay. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> if, if there was no situation made or created uh, for him to be glorified in the sight of the people. He had to do something to show those that could not believe during that time that he was truly the son of God. And now he would show it through his authority over death. Minister Ramos, I, I just, this, this verse is just sticking out. Maybe you have something else you want to add to verse 4. It says, the sickness is not unto death. But it keeps saying, but for the glory of God. The praise team sing a song, for your glory. I will do anything but for the glory of God. Could we just talk a little bit about the glory of God um, and how the Son of God might be glorified thereby? Absolutely, Elder Dukes. We watch Jesus over the weeks constantly remind them that his purpose for being on this earth was to do the will of his father mm -hmm. was to glorify his father he wasn't there for himself he wasn't no, no. there to be glorified he was making sure that everyone understood that the glory belonged to God yeah. so even in death we are to the glory of God mm -hmm. so we want to recognize and make sure we remember Jesus didn't rush back so they can say that Jesus did it that Jesus did it. So he also made sure that even though he loved Lazarus, even though he respected his friends, he made sure, again, that all the glory belonged to God. To God. So we, we see, again, just like in last week or the week before that, that when he told them, even unto death, even unto death, just like um, Adam and Eve, when they left the garden and mm -hmm. the came to them and said that um, you would surely die. Or no, you won't surely die right. if you eat the fruit. But it was a spiritual death. It wasn't mm -hmm. talking about a fleshly death. That's this, right. in, we see, is the opposite. This was a fleshly a death, flesh. but Lazarus' spirit was still there. And yeah. God, uh, Jesus, when he goes to him, he calls him by his name. And that's what gave um, Lazarus back his life. So we want to yeah. recognize that all the glory, all the glory, and that's what Jesus' first priority was, to make sure that we give all the glory to God. My God, you Man. said you said he was dead, but his spirit was still there. Mm -hmm. So he was still in that moment of transition. Amen. <laughs> but the Lord wouldn't let him transition because he had every intention of bringing him back. Did y'all hear what I just said? The Lord didn't let him transition. Yeah, death showed up, mm -hmm. but the Lord didn't let him transition. And so what am I saying to you this morning? I'm saying the Lord will allow the most tragic events to show up, but they won't harm you. Come on. Hmm? He, he will allow things to show up in your life, but they won't tear you up. They won't destroy you. Amen. You know, the scripture says that trials come to make us strong. Amen. Huh? They come to make us stronger. So he didn't say that we wouldn't have them. He didn't say we wouldn't have grief. But he says that uh, to have peace because he's overcome the world. And that we've got to have that peace uh, that the Son of God, it's all about him, might be glorified. It's, it's funny how the Bible always say might be. You know, Paul's prayer for Israel that they might be saved. Because it's always uh, just that chance that there's going to be somebody that don't matter what happens, they're just not going to do it. Right. There's always going to be somebody, no matter what you say, what you do, they're not going to believe. They're not going to trust them. 
They're not going to serve him. And so this is why he says that the son of God might be glorified thereby. This what this was about. This why he, uh, as Minister Ramos and Elder Solomon was talking about, um, that Jesus didn't um, move expediently. Uh, he, it, wasn't, it didn't look like he was in a rush, but he knew his purpose. He knew once he got to him, whether he was alive or whether he had died, that once he spoke to him, that he would come back to life. So he was not worried about it. And this is why uh, we've got to cast all our care upon him. Put all of our hope in him because he knows better for us. And so when we look at verse 5, it says, Now Jesus loved Martha. There was no uh, doubt about that. And his sister and Lazarus. So now this confirms that Jesus had a relationship with them. He was very close to them. He really loved them. So hearing that Lazarus was sick, Jesus had compassion. This, this, this would have hurt him even more to hear that his friend uh, was sick. And I believe, uh, wasn't it uh, maybe in this same book, maybe we're going to read it later on, that because of this situation, Minister Ramos, later on, we'll probably have it next week in Sunday school, that Jesus wept. Jesus wept. That's the shortest scripture. Yeah. If you don't know any other scripture, you just say Jesus wept. Because he wept for his friend. Amen. That means that he had compassion as well. And not only he had the compassion, but he had the power and authority to do something about it. That, that says something else to us um, this morning. Jesus' response to a dire need. Not only did he have the compassion, when you have the compassion for something, you also have the authority and the power to do something about it. That's right. To do something. You know, faith without works is dead. God did not save us just for us to say, as you said one time, you know, people are always saying, I'm, I'm praying for you. And then I, I begin to ask the question, are you really praying are for you me? Really? You know, when you told me you praying for me, did you really get on your knees? Did you really take a moment just to, to call my name out in right. prayer? Amen. Or Amen. is it just the lingo and the language that you say? When you hear of something that's tragic that's happened. Are you really praying? So when we have compassion, we have the authority. He give us the power to do something about it. And this is what happens with Jesus. Now Jesus loved Martha and his, her sister and Lazarus. So verse 6 says, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he heard. He abode two days still in the same place where he was. So that means, Elder Solomon, as you just said earlier, he didn't move right away. He didn't move. Amen. <laughs> he didn't. He stayed in the same place for two days. Verse 7 says, Then after that, said he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. Now, let, let me take a quick commercial break, and I'm going to turn it over to Elder Solomon. This is a problem for his disciples. Because back in John 10, 34, I believe, Jesus had to get out of Jerusalem Amen. because of his claim, of his deity. And they tried to stone him, but the Heavenly Father protected him. And so the disciples, uh, they asked Jesus, you sure you want to go back to Jerusalem? You sure you want to go back to Judea? Because you know your life is in danger there, but the Heavenly Father had protected him. Amen. But you, uh, Jesus knew that there was a greater purpose. I got to get back. My friend, my friend is sick. And as you um, look at this in verse 9, and I'm going to turn it over to you, Elder Solomon. Verse 9 says, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Amen. Jesus knew he had to get back Amen. to help his friend. Could you expound some on these scriptures here? Amen. Uh, Jesus uh, clearly lets uh, his disciples know that he had a purpose to go back. And sometimes uh, we have to walk through situations uh, that don't seem favorable to us yeah. to do the work of mm. God. And a lot of times we act as if we don't understand that there's going to be some difficulty. Mm -hmm. But that's why the Bible tells us our trials and tribulations come to make us stronger, yeah. tells us to be thankful in all things and, and to endure hardness. Yes, sir. Amen. 
as good soldiers. As good soldiers. And if he had not intended for us to go through things sometimes, those words would not have been written in the scriptures. And so now Jesus is letting them know that we're going back. Mm -hmm. I'm not concerned about what happened the last time we was there. Right. I'm not concerned you. about what nobody said. I'm not concerned about what no one tries to do. There's a purpose. And Sunday school, that's what we have to get to the point to where if we know what our purpose is in God, no matter what dangers we face, as long as you pray and believe in God and ask him to protect you from dangers seen and unseen, you'll be fine. And so Jesus let them know, yes, we're going back. We're, we're going back because we've got work to do. Amen. And sometimes you just got to face whatever you got to face and say to yourself, in spite of what I see, I got work to do. And go and do the work that God sends you to do. Amen. I Amen. love that, Elder Solomon. I got work to do. I don't care about the threat. I know my assignment. I know my purpose. And nothing can get in the way of that. I know my assignment. I, I don't care what's going on in my life. Nothing can get in the way of my assignment and my purpose. Sometimes we put God on hold because of things that are going on around us and things that are going on in our life. Jesus couldn't put that on hold right. because there was somebody that needed him. There was somebody that needed deliverance. There was somebody that needed a healing. There was somebody that needed to be raised Amen. from the dead. Somebody needed him. They had a dire need. So he couldn't put his ministry on hold because of the threat around him, because of the danger. That's a lesson. That's another lesson to us. We can't put our assignments and our purpose on hold just because we feel, uh, well, I still need to get it together. We cannot put our assignment on hold. That's what God has given to us. Oh, I don't feel like I'm there yet. We cannot put our assignment on hold because God have need of you. You know, if he can use a donkey, certainly he can use you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, and so, so verse 9 you know, there, I, there's a double meaning to this. If any man walk in the day, he stumble him not, because he see of the light of this world. So this was also, Minister Ramos, drawing us to that if we walk in him, which mm -hmm. is the light, the light of the world, we will not stumble. This is going to a deeper spiritual truth now. Amen. And then verse 10 says, but if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth. Because there is no light in him. Why does he stumble? Because there's no light. There's it's just darkness. Darkness is only a result of no apparent light shining. Mm -hmm. Amen. Darkness is not um, an entity by itself. Light is. Darkness is just a result of the entity of light not shining in that place. The absence of is the absence, thank you, of light. So let me, let me move this down. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Here we go. Now he was sick, but now Jesus knew that he had died. My God, Jesus knew before he got there. He wasn't no longer sick. Amen. He had died. But I go that I may awake him out of what? Sleep. Amen. Amen. Minister Ramos if um, I can get you just to expound a little bit on these verses, uh, Jesus said, our friend sleepeth, but he's going to awake him um, out of sleep. And I just want you to talk about his authority, his power now, even over death, not just to heal, but the power over death. Right. And as you stated before, the miracles that God, I'm sorry, that Jesus had um, accomplished throughout this time, even when he walked on water and the disciples were able to... Um, acknowledge him walking on water and now that they saw him overcoming the winds and the waves and water and the natural things now that they're going to see him again overcome death so death had no power even over Jesus so we want to understand that but I like verses 9 and 10 because Jesus has always had a way of speaking with me the very intelligence that comes out of his mouth the very wisdom that he brings Forth, always kind of stirs up something in my spirit. And when he told him, told them 
that if any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. And who is the light of this world? It's, it's Jesus. Jesus. Yes. He told them last week that he was the light of the world. And when he came, he came to overcome darkness. darkness. What is death? Death is a part of the darkness. So yes. even in death, Jesus overcomes darkness death because it is part of darkness. So we want to make sure we understand that this was not an obstacle for Jesus. He didn't say that this was going to be too much for him. He had to make sure that he was going to get right first. He had to go fast. He didn't have to do all of that. He knew that he can accomplish even death. So he didn't rush off and he was not frustrated or stressed out and needs to make sure he get everything accomplished before. No, he didn't do that. He knew his timing. He knew his assignment. He knew his purpose just like you were stating, and he accomplished what he needed to first, and then he was about, again, glorifying his father's business even in death. My God. My God. You know, you talk about even in death, the disciples didn't understand what Jesus was saying. Mm -hmm. They thought that uh, he was just saying that Lazarus was just taking a rest. Right. But Jesus had to say it plainly, your friend dead. Yes. Our friend is dead. Amen. He's setting up the scenery. That our friend is dead. He's gone. But Jesus said, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. Amen. <laughs> I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Didn't we just say this earlier? Mm. That all of this happened for the glory of God. That the son of God might, big word there, might be glorified. Amen. He says, I was glad that I wasn't there. I could have left earlier. I could have got there quicker. Mm -hmm. I could have got there before he died. But I'm glad I wasn't there because this is done that you may believe. Right. Sometimes you're not going to believe until you see it happen right in front of you. Yes. And this is the situation. This is the situation. This that they may believe. So nevertheless, let us go unto him. Now Jesus said we can work. Mm -hmm. Now I got something to work with. He's no longer sick. He's gone. Sometimes he, allow, he allows us to get to those places, to those points, just so he can manifest his glory in our lives, just so he can reveal who he really is in our lives. Jesus here, he is demonstrating his authority and his power over death. But why did he do it for them? He did it for them, but he really did it for us. He did it that we may believe in him. I don't know any other historical figure or little God that can raise the dead. I don't know. I have never heard of him. I don't know about him. But what we do believe here is that Jesus have authority and power over death. And the reason he did it once again, I'm going to say it because this is the most important thing of this Sunday school this morning. He did it that the son, not only did it brought glory to the father, but that the son now of God might, might be glorified. glorified. You know why he saved you? You know why he bought you through what he bought you through? To glorify you, to, to glo the, that the son might be glorified. You Thank know why you, you was a mess? You, you shouldn't be where you are now. You shouldn't be working where you're working now. You shouldn't be having the kind of money. You shouldn't be in this place that you're in now. He did it that the son might be glorified. A lot of times we think it's about us. We think about it because we have deserved it. I did this. I did that. I deserve this place of favor. No, they got nothing to do with you. It's that the son of God might be glorified. Amen. That you may believe. That's what it's about, that you may believe. And so the, the end of this, verse 16 says, Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, and I hope I'm saying that right, mm -hmm. unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. It's always Thomas. It's always, <laughs> always Thomas, always saying something out the way. Amen. Let us also go that we may die with him. Elder Solomon, before I close this out, you have anything, closing words you want to add to this um, this morning? Well, we, we see that the disciples themselves, uh, they walk with Jesus, they've experienced everything that Jesus has done, and yet and still, uh, the first part of this story lets us know uh, that 
no matter what Jesus has done, even those that follow him Mm -hmm. still have some reservation or some doubt. And Thomas says to them, well, let's go back and and we're going to be just like Lazarus. (laughs) And they're going to kill us and they're going to kill Jesus too. But, you know, and and sometimes uh, you have to be mindful of the things uh, that you let enter into your mind and into your heart because uh, many times we, we will speak well of the Lord. We'll speak well of God. But when the rubber meets the road, when it gets tough, what's really in your heart will come out of your mouth because you can always say uh, uh, God is good all the time and all the time God is good. But what are you going to say? When your back is up against the wall, what are you going to say when people lie on you? What are you going to say when people misuse you? What are you going to say when you have to make a move and every step you take could be your last? Where is your faith? How strong is it? Don't say you have it unless you're willing to let it be seen. My God, Amen. you said one thing before I close it out. You said everybody can talk a good game. Everybody can say it. Everyone, you know, even those in the world are not even saved. You hear everybody saying, God got me. Amen. And after they say, God got me, they'll turn around and curse and say some just very vocal words. Amen. And then after they say it, they'll say, oh, yeah, I know God got me. People can say them. They can say what they want to say. Everybody can talk a good game. But what are you going to do when your back is against the wall? you got to have something stronger than that. you got to have some faith. And Jesus did this that we may believe. And he said, blessed are they that have never seen me, but yet believe. More blessed. We've never seen them, but we believe. There was those that were there with them, and they saw this. And some of them didn't believe. And we heard last week when Jesus rebuked the Pharisees, he said, you're going to die in your sin because you refuse to believe. Don't let that be us on this morning. He said, believe. If you believe in me, you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus will help us in a dire need. He'll always come through. They used to sing a song, Jesus will work it out. I'm a witness. Yes, he will. He will work it out. Sunday School Week, thank you once again for tuning in. God is good and all the time. He's always doing great things in our lives. You be blessed. You be blessed. And I want you to tune back in with us at 10 a.m. I guarantee you, God got a blessing for you this morning. Call your family member. Call your friend. Call those at work and let them know. to Go on Facebook. New Heart Christian Center is on live, 10 a.m. God have a blessing for you this morning. God bless you. God keep you. And let heaven smile upon you. Amen.